Oh, man, I don't even know if I know how to do this anymore. So I was actually starting to feel like Razer was never going to do a 60% keyboard. It's true that the TKL form factor is more accessible, but it's really hard to deny that small form factor boards have really become more commonplace in gaming, especially over like the last year or so. Now Razer has the Huntsman Mini 60%, and they've taken a lot of feedback from the community to get to this version. I was lucky enough to have one of these well in advance and get to provide feedback along the way for this thing. So we're gonna check it out. And the studio here is almost finished, but not quite. It's utter chaos everywhere that's not on this camera right now. So this is the only angle you get. You ready? Let's go. Today's video is sponsored by Dakoni Audio. Dakoni, makers of some of the finest headphone replacement pads, have just dropped their famed Bullets replacement ear tips for the AirPods Pro. These are a game changer, and I feel qualified to say that because I use my AirPods every day. The Pro was a big step forward because you could finally achieve that seal that was missing from the originals. Unfortunately, if you've ever spent any time with them, you know the included silicone tips are not the greatest. I find myself repositioning them often throughout the day, and my right ear in particular has to be adjusted just a certain way to maintain the seal. Even with the largest set. I don't have to do any of that anymore. They fit right in the case the same way. I just pop them in and I'm good to go. The slow memory foam here is wrapped around the center mounting hub so they don't have to collapse all the way down like a normal memory foam tip, which means no wait time while they situate in your ears. Everything is enhanced from the fit to the comfort and they offer better isolation as well so you in turn enjoy more music and less distractions. If you sometimes sleep in your AirPods like I do, these are infinitely more comfortable than the stock tips. You can sleep on your side, literally right on your ear and it's totally comfortable. If you've ever tried that with the stock tips, you know that's not the case. And these stay put all night. I put them in my ears. I wake up with them in my ears. I don't have like one on the floor next to the bed and the other one like stuck to my back or whatever. These do run true to size. So just order whatever size you'd normally wear in a stock tip. And they do have plans to bring a sampler pack to market soon that contains multiple sizes in one pack. Seriously, game changer. These are available right now on Amazon for $12.99 for a single set or $24.99 for a three pack. Or you can head to DaconiAudio.com to learn more. Yo, I'm Brian P. You're watching Bad Seed Tech and today we're taking a look at the Huntsman Mini 60% gaming keyboard from Razer. So this keyboard will come in two different versions. The clicky purple switch variant at $119.99, which is available right now at Best Buy when you watch this video, and the linear red switch version, which will be available in August for $129.99. This will also be available in both black as shown and the mercury white right at launch. We see a lot of the same design language from the Huntsman Tournament Edition, and because Razer does a really solid job of listening to the market right now, they do a lot right here as well. Keycaps are double shot backlit PVT, and the bottom row is standard. So if if you do want to replace your caps, you can not only do so with Razer's offerings, but most any MX compatible keycaps. Also, I have to mention that Razer's own PBT keycaps will soon be available in a really wide variety of layouts and languages for users all over the world. The included keycaps here have a really clean, seamless font, incredibly thin for a PBT cap, nearing ABS precision. It's impressive. These are super thick too, so durability won't be an issue. They have a little texture to them, but they're not rough or chalky in any way. You'll also find all the secondary legends laser etched on the fronts. This is great if you're new to 60%. People are sometimes confused that a 60% is missing keys, like the function row or the tilde, but these are accessible by first hitting function and then the corresponding key. Your arrow keys are IJKL and are also accessed with that function key. Now, of course, you can remap anything in Synapse if you want, and they include four profile storage as well, so your stuff will travel with you. So you see you still get media controls. You can even adjust the lighting with the basics that you'd normally get in Synapse without having to use Synapse. This is so you can travel with this board and use it on systems where you may not be able to or not want to install Synapse, like your work PC, for instance. The RGB lighting itself looks solid. It is muted due to that black aluminum top plate. The beauty part of a 60% layout versus something specialty like a 65 is that 60% is standard, so you don't have to worry about buying much more expensive keycap sets to be able to fit things like weird bottom rows, that outside column, or those specialty size shift keys. I tested a variety of popular replacement keycaps, including the stuff from Matrix. They work great. Overall, we've got a really minimal case with a floating 
switch design and it's really light at around 450 grams. You definitely get the idea that it's meant for traveling. Bottom of the board has the four gamers, by gamers, repeating print and gloss plastic. It's actually part of the case. You also get four rubber pads in the corners if you run the board flat. You do get flip down plastic feet both in six and nine degrees. The board slides a little bit more with the feet than running it flat. Cable connection here is a removable non-proprietary USB-C. They do include a really thick braided cable and the head is wide and locks into the frame securely, but they give you enough room here to where you can use whatever aftermarket cable you want. So you probably know by now that one of the things that sets Razer keyboards apart is their optical switch. They currently have two versions, the purple clicky and the red linear. My copy came with the new linears and I like these for their smoothness and their speed, but I have knocked these in the past for being loud. I'm a heavy typer and the tournament edition and the early versions of this board were very loud for me. So I was floored when I got the final retail copy of this keyboard. Not only was the unboxing experience like second to none in the custom space bar, a really nice touch, but they have improved these switches by adding more lube from the factory. Who knew Razer switches were factory lubed in the first place? And they've added silicone dampeners to every switch on this board, similar to what you might find in an MX silent switch. It would still be a big reach to call this board silent, but the acoustics are incredibly improved. I'm really stoked on this. If you're heavy handed, it's gonna cut down on the noise quite a lot. If you're a touch typist, this board is very quiet. The only knock I have here is that the switch design lends itself to rattle. Now on the tournament edition, I illustrated this by shaking the board back and forth, which in fairness is not a valid use scenario, but here's what I mean. Every key has noticeable wobble and a sound that you would normally associate with stabilizer rattle. In terms of performance though, it's a beast. The Linears have a 40 gram actuation force, total travel of 3.5 millimeters and a 1.0 millimeter actuation point. I like these in game versus something like an MX Speed because these are fast, but you're not gonna accidentally actuate a key. It has to be an intentional press. So aside from fitting into any existing Razer themed setup you might have, the Switch is really the main attraction here versus the competition. It's not lost on me that the One Too Many has a lot of the same features minus those optical switches and comes in at $99 versus the either $119 or $129 price point here. The Mecha Mini is also available at $119 with an aluminum case, depending on your travel goals. The duck keyboards are also sold out often. Still, given the lack of any included extras with this keyboard, I would have liked to see this come in about $10 cheaper. I would imagine purely speculation on my part, but the cost difference between the two, I don't think they're probably gonna put the silicone dampeners on the clicky switch since it's already a loud switch. This is just a guess. But if you look at any MX switch out there, anytime you buy a silence one, anything that has dampeners in it, the cost is gonna go up a little bit. If this board was at a $99 price point, it would fly off the shelves. But I have to hand it to Razer for one big reason. They're one of the only, maybe the only big manufacturer who are not only listening to the enthusiast market, they're not afraid of it. They sent this board a pre-built production store shelf board to a guy they know is going to grade it as hard as anything else out there. That's why I like pointing out stuff like stem wobble or wire rattle because I know they're going to go back and try to improve that. So it's a little pricey, but it's a solid board that does almost everything right. And it's a really easy fit if you're already invested in the Razer ecosystem. Plus, it makes a great little travel board you can just throw in your bag too. As always, links down in the description. These are live right now at Best Buy and I expect they're gonna sell very well. Any questions, hit me in the comments or drop by the Discord. That's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up.